All right, welcome back for another lesson in the masterclass. Today, we're gonna talk about statistics. Now, why are we gonna do this? Well, we don't wanna dig through these trace files and do so with a complete microscope, trying to figure stuff out packet by packet by packet by packet. No, wrong. We gotta use statistics. Let's see how. All right, so it's good to see you back in this lesson. Again, my name's Chris, welcome, and I hope that you've been enjoying this series. If you have, well, make sure to let me know, give me a like, please share, please subscribe, let your friends know all about this class that we're having fun with. Now, you can go ahead and download the link to the trace file in the description down below for following along with what I'm about to do. What do we wanna think about with statistics with Wireshark? Well, think about getting a very top level view of a trace file. Again, there's so much going on at the packet level, hundreds of protocols and conversations running around on a PCAP. Instead, what statistics can really help us to do is give us that 100,000 foot view and also allow us to filter on some conversations that jump out at us. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the PCAP. So here right away, we can see that we have some pings going on. If I really scroll down below that, I got some TCP SYNs, got some things going on in this trace file. If I take a glance down at the number of packets that I have, I got 33,863 packets in this trace. And of course, not really sure exactly what I'm looking at just yet, unless I was actually the one to capture this traffic. So I almost do this like muscle memory every single time that I open up a PCAP. And that is come up to the statistics menu. And what I like to do is come down to conversations. All right, so what conversations will do is it will show me by layer of address, how many conversations that I have in this trace file. So let me show you what I mean. Ethernet, for example. Well, I only have two MAC addresses at layer two that are talking to one another. And quickly by looking at the bytes and looking at the packets, I can see that these two are having a conversation back and forth. Now, it could be that this is one machine talking to its gateway and it's actually talking to other stations behind that gateway. But in the context of layer two, I only have one conversation. Okay, that's just good information for me to know. If I come over here to IPv4, I've got 260 conversations. Whoa, a whole lot more going on. So if I come over here, I can see address A, address B, the number of packets, the number of bytes, how many went from A to B, how many went from B to A, and so on. Then just scrolling down, I can see I have quite a few that are happening. In fact, if I come over here, I like to use these two columns here as well. And this is called relative start and duration. So the way we read this is, see, I got this gray bar here. And this gives me a visual of how long lived was this conversation and where in the trace file did it start. So let me actually give, give you a better example here. I'm just going to scroll down. How about down here? So here I can see that this conversation started 3.224 seconds into the trace file and it lasted for 5.4 seconds. All right, so that'll help us upstairs when we see some of these longer ones. So this one happened almost exactly at the start, very close to the start, and it lasted for 38 seconds. So you see how that graphical view helps me out. So it's the left edge of the relative start column all the way to the right edge of the duration column. That's where you'll see that graphical representation. Again, it's how long lived was the conversation and when did it start with reference from start to finish of the entire trace file. All right, so that can give me a, just a visual of what's going on. Now, I can see right away, doesn't take a capture guru to see that there's some interesting things happening in this trace file. If we take a look here, I've got, uh, just the, the link partners, if you will, the number of conversations that are happening. Uh, port, I'm looking at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, It seems almost like I'm scanning through all of these IPs, doesn't it? Seems like there's something going on here. And it's happening to almost the entire subnet. So that's something that would definitely catch my attention if I was doing some analysis here. And in fact, let's go ahead and go over to TCP. So first of all, TCP, I've got 17,476 conversations. That's a ton of TCP conversations. And if I look in here, you notice how the number of packets, number of packets total in these conversations is either one, or in a lot of cases, I can see two or three, very low number. And I can also take a look at those ports. So here I can see that this is behaving 
really like a port scan. It's like one machine is just blasting through port 443 in the entire subnet, trying to see if anybody is listening to that port. In fact, if I sort on the port B, I can see that the scanner 2.115 or 2.15, it's going out and it's hitting port 1. And then I can see it jump to port 3. And then I can see it jump to port 7. So you see, it's not doing it sequentially. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe it's trying to avoid detection or do so under the radar. But I can see that this is very low port number to be trying to initiate to another device. It's very rare that I would try to hit something on port three, right? And as I scroll through here, I can see that these numbers just gradually tick up. Again, they're not sequential. Looks like this scanner was trying to evade detection and it goes all the way up to uh, 999 on the port numbers. So just with using statistics, here I can see that this is some very unusual activity. So especially if I'm doing any type of network forensics, uh, if I'm trying to find someone that's enumerating different devices for cybersecurity reasons, I wanna uh, check to see, do I have any type of intrusions going on? There definitely would be some indicators here that I'd want to focus more attention on. Who is 2.15 and why are they scanning through this entire subnet looking for these open ports? Okay, so let me show you one other way that I really like to use statistics. Let me come back to the IPv4 area. Now let's say that instead of looking at a trace file that had a port scan on it like we see in this trace file, uh, what if I was tracking down a slow file transfer or some data set, a larger data set that was moving from one machine to another? Well, an easy way to find that is if I just sort on bytes, what this will do is it'll say, it'll put the either on the top or bottom, depending on how I click. Uh, I can see the top talker, or the chatterbox, the chatterbox conversation between those two endpoints. It will rise to the top or it'll be at the bottom, depending on how I click. Now, often what I'll do is I'll use this just to see, okay, who's talking to who and which conversation am I really looking to analyze? From here, super nice that we can do this. I just right click, apply as filter, selected, and likely what I'm looking to do is A to B and B to A, bidirectional traffic between those two stations. All right, so as soon as I click this, now I can say close and Wireshark will have filtered on those two endpoints. Now the nice thing about doing it from the IP level, well here I can see I have both ICMP, I've got TCP. If I had any other protocols running between those two IPs, I would be able to see them there. Now, if I just wanted to focus on one TCP connection, that's where I could have gone over to the TCP button, found one of the heavier TCP connections, right click and do the same thing there. So I can do it on a Mac conversation, an IP conversation, an IPv6 conversation, a TCP connection or a UDP conversation. So there's a tip with Wireshark. Try to get used to using statistics. When you first open up a trace file and you just want to get a lay of the land and get an idea of what's happening within the trace, go ahead and go to statistics and then start in conversations. That'll give you that 100,000 foot view. You can then see what type of behaviors are happening, when they happen in the trace file, and for how long they lasted. And then that's where you can begin filtering down on your packets that matter. Okay, thanks for stopping by for this lesson in the Wireshark Masterclass. I will see you again on the next video.